Welcome, everybody, to another episode of New House, Same Address. I'm hello, joined hello. by uh, Karis and Eric Barker, yep. of course. I'm mixing it up today. Yeah, the the side Karis of the is <laughs> across from me this time, and Eric is on the right or your left. So, we're going to get into it today. Yeah, they're left. Well, they're watching the... It's mm. from, Anyways, it doesn't matter. We're going to talk about 10, is it? 10. 10 essential ten. questions you need to ask your bathroom or kitchen or window or door remodeler. Yeah, mostly rem- uh, bathroom. Bathroom so remodel. Okay, yeah. we're going to talk about the bathroom yeah, specifically. They would apply to all of them. Okay, copy that. Very true. This now, particular one is tailored to bathrooms. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> They're listening. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're going to go through the ten, <laughs> the ten top ten most essential questions um, that we've found during our little walk here at Ozark Home Pros, and you guys have had a longer walk than I've had. Thanks. Being double my age, which is really young. <laughs> They're still really young and beautiful. Just, so just don't, he likes to like make sure we understand how old we are. It's okay. Yeah, you know, this year uh, my birthday and my grandmother's birthday always in the same month, but um, she was actually twice my age this year. So it mm. made me think she was forty-seven when I was born. Mm. No grandmother, many children grandmother at 47. Wait, she's double yours. Yeah, yeah she, she, she turned 94. She was 47 when you were born? Mm-hmm. So she, she was 90 her. what? She's, she's 94. Nice. And I turned 47 this year. So. Oh, Let's actually, go. she insists that she's decided she will always be 93. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. awesome. That's yeah. very funny. Hmm. So, anyway, I don't know okay. how... Well, how did that happen? That's okay. We're talking about how young Jocelyn was. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, I'm turning 25 <laughs> in December. <laughs> yeah, well... Not not half my age then, that's good. Yep. <clears throat> Anyhow, all right. What's number one? Yeah. Let's number jump into one. It. Um, can I see examples of your past remodeling work? Can you? You will. Uh, well. If you see me. Okay. If we're gonna get into the grammar <laughs> of the question, in the in the most common. <laughs> yes. Um, may I? May I yeah. see a picture? Yes, you may. <laughs> if someone asks that, yes, yeah. Yes, we give them. Um, if someone asked me that, I was like, you know, here's our website. I mm-hmm. will email you and um, tell you the website so you can go and look at it. And then you're welcome to go and look at our gallery. It has pictures. Right. Mm. How important do you think that is to someone making a decision? I, I see your past work. <laughs> well, I like to think people don't ask dumb questions, but I do that all the time. <laughs> Secondly, um, if they, I think that's important to them. Um they want to know that you're credible, and they might hear all the uh, standard points of, you know, like your insurance and your, um, you know, warranties and stuff like that. And that's a way, you know, in your Google reviews, you know, you're credible on paper, but what does actually your work look like? Yeah, um, who cares if you have insurance if you have ugly products? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, why couldn't you just, yeah. like, how trustworthy is seeing a picture of, oh, I did that? Oh, yeah, well, you know that's I mean? why last night, actually, on one of my appointments, she was interested in how it was actually going to turn out. So I went and I showed her our website. It's mm-hmm. our website. It's hard to fake that. Um, went and tossed her through the gallery and stuff like that. And if there was any other example she was willing or wanting to see of specifically full bathroom remodels, then I would go to kind of our um database and grab photos from previous Mm -hmm. jobs Mm -hmm. because we do have other pictures one of the things that we do with our crew is we make them take pictures in a job log and we try to get pictures throughout the process so we can you know quality control and all that stuff and just kind of we just keep an eye on everything and sometimes um they're not exactly website worthy (laughs) (laughs) well yeah i mean mean, you know they're talking about an installer with a (laughs) cell phone you know those type of pictures but we do have additional pictures we can pull that are just not you know Mm -hmm. well lit in the right shadows yeah angles and all that stuff they're not professional photographers ladies and gentlemen they're professional installers well we just i mean more to that point we just started using uh company cam uh, Mm -hmm. again i had used it years ago um Mm -hmm. but there's going to be so many pictures, like loads of pictures that you yeah. can see from start to finish mm-hmm. the yep. whole process. So. And it's been really helpful that that whole yes. system has been helpful anyway when people have called in and say, you know, I don't remember where the blocking is or I don't remember where the plumbing is on my shower. Do you have pictures of that? And I'm like, sure, I can just go right to the that file, pull up a picture and text it to them and then they have it. So Yeah. yeah. Pictures are worth a thousand words. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very so valuable. if you ask me if you want to see examples, 100%. 
Mm-hmm. I'll show you on the spot. Okay. And number two, do you take on bathroom remodeling projects of my scope? Hmm. Well, it depends, depends on what depends your scope is. Depends on what is. your scope is. Yeah. What would motivate someone to ask that question? Well, we've had a couple of different um, – people have really weird bathrooms. Like <sighs> – they really do, like especially some of the older homes. Like the configuration is very strange, or very mm-hmm. tiny, or very narrow, and there's just not a whole lot of. You could remodel it, but yeah. the problem is still going to be that it's small. Um, and we are very clear when you call in. We have a list of questions we usually go through. I mean, people like, why are you asking so many questions? It's because we have to make sure we can even help you. We're not going to waste your time by getting out yes. there and say, oh wait a minute, this isn't even something we do. So we usually try to ask a lot of those questions yeah. on the phone to make sure you're in our scope, and then if we can, right, we can help. We'll set an appointment. <clears throat> yeah, um, it doesn't happen very often sometimes, but there's like I think of it in terms of what I know is in Builder Prime on the uh, when I'm going in and making an estimate. Mm-hmm. So I know I'm familiar with what we can and can't do. Mm-hmm. And Builder so, Prime is the software we use. Correct. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's just. Um, most of the time, yeah. I mean, it's but it's pretty easy to draw a line between is it a bathroom remodel or is it a bathroom addition? Are you like, mm-hmm. if we mess with any exterior walls, it's an automatic no. Um, other things like um, moving a uh, toilet drain mm-hmm. very far, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I think that question <clears throat> also could be like, do you only specialize in one thing or – are you capable of doing right or certain other, products right. over <clears throat> others you know mm-hmm. i mean we sorry we only do gold-plated toilets so if you're not <laughs> wanting gold-plated i mean like, yeah. no I and mean, we we'll ask those questions usually those questions are going to be asked on the front end though when you call in or you mm-hmm. send in an inquiry mm-hmm. um either myself or someone in our call center will will ask those questions and make sure that we can help yeah and i think it's um it's almost a way of asking, can you actually do this? <laughs> do you have yeah. the skills that it's going to take to do this whole project? True. Yeah. And there's, Which there's, I think is worth asking. It is a very, yeah. very worthwhile thing. But I mean. And sometimes what I say to people is um, it's just being honest with them. Yes, we can do that. We will not. However, <laughs> that's yeah. right. That's right. Eric I, will I, do things I, outside of our scope of work for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I, I know what Eric is capable of, and I know what we've done in the past. Right. But we don't do it anymore based on our policy changes and business model. So yeah, mm-hmm. or we could just say, well, um, you know, we've never done that before, but we're happy to practice on your house if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> There's not much you haven't done. Yeah, I mean, true. Yeah. But I was looking at pictures yesterday of a, a house that was Civil War era that he remodeled, and it was that was. Did you keep fun. it in that era, that style? A lot of it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really nice. Mm-hmm. All the floors were uh, saved, and on the addition, we found some heart pine floors that match very closely to oh, it. Oh, so, very um, cool. I need to show you pictures of that. Yeah, house. that'd be yeah. sick. Original framing, original floors. Mm-hmm. So the true original to burn fours. marks from where yeah. Sherman tried to burn it down. Nice. Mm-hmm. Those were fun. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. But you had fun pulling the nails out of that. It was a lot of work. I did. Well, we I've had done to that demo before. All the plaster. Yeah. And then start over. It was oh, very, it was so very pretty, similar though. to a house that I remodeled with my dad. And there was plaster on the wall. It was true oak, two by four, pulling nails mm-hmm. out of it. Yeah, some of the. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, okay. some of the beams just on the floor <clears throat> structure. Was, uh, they were so pretty. Yeah, it was. That's like cool. Eight by twelve. Yeah. Heart pine beams under the floor that, you know. Mm-hmm. Nice Gorgeous. Though. But anyhow. Okay. We can talk about that later. So number three, how many projects do you run at the same time? Now that's a great question. <laughs> well, it depends on where they are in our pipeline. So what, um, I mean, it's a good question. What is uh, the motivating factor behind a client asking this question? They're mm-hmm. probably wondering if they're going to be number one importance, mm-hmm. probably what it is, am I going to be a priority? Um, they've probably had experiences in the past where they've had, they come do the demo, pull off, wait like True. a day or two, come back, start installing, and their contractor just flips and flops between different jobs. Mm-hmm. Now, we semi solve that, and there's a couple ways that we truly can't, if they're doing a custom door, 
which I always tell my clients up front, if you're doing a custom door, the product has to be installed first before they even measure, cut the glass, and then order it. We'll pull up a temporary curtain for you. Like yeah. a shower door. Right. right. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I would say. I'm glad we could specify that. I was <coughs> yeah. like, because no, I'm getting confused. I'm like, we're going to tear measure out your door it. and put a curtain there. <laughs> so <laughs> the good luck. Uh, a little <laughs> drafty sometimes, right. but you'll be fine. You'll right. be fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but for that specific instance, they're going to be without their finished job shower door yeah Mm -hmm. for a while and we can't just sit around we're going to start a new one Mm -hmm. so at any given time i would say between three and five and now the reason why i say that for our business is because we only have three crews you have three crews and sometimes they kind of rotate around and a lot of times and we only pull off a job when it's a case like that typically right and so it scheduling can be a nightmare Mm -hmm. and you know it's not fun to have to make those phone calls and say look they're running late they didn't finish yesterday so they're not going to get there today or they're not going to get there till one o'clock versus when i told you yesterday it was going to be eight yeah (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. those are those are really not fun conversations to have but we would much rather finish something than start on yours and then have Mm -hmm. to pull off and come back and oh yeah those that can be yeah, that's worse. Well, it saves the clients headaches and it saves us time too. <coughs> so from a, it's just smart business wise to do it that way. Yeah, it's a good question to ask because um, if you're asking your contractor, so where do I fit in your timeline? Mm-hmm. Then you're just clarifying expectations up front. Yep. Mm-hmm. So getting rid of any surprises. If they say, well, you know, this project's going to take us about three months, when someone else is telling you it should take two weeks, there's some red flags there that right. are worth pursuing like yeah, what's going that's, on that's an indicator you should ask more questions we've yeah. run into that a lot we'll tell someone our our we have a pretty good idea of where we are if you were to sign a contract today yep. and we agree on all the terms we know you would be installed in about x amount of weeks yeah we can get it down to about a two week range we yeah we yeah. know we have a window because we know about how much time it's going to take mm-hmm. where our crews are how long the product's going to take to come in stuff like that yep. um but when they said well another contractor i got a price from said they could do it in four days i'm like hmm so what questions should we be asking mm-hmm. um because the work won't take more than four days but we can't do it for six weeks, and then it will take four days. So right. it yeah. could just be a matter of not asking the right questions. Right. So these questions are very important to ask. Yeah, absolutely. Lead time would be what I would call that. Yeah. Our lead time right now. Is yeah, that. and it's Ozark Home Pro's policy that we don't start any of our projects until all the materials are at the mm-hmm. site, the warehouse. Mm-hmm. And we're that still working we on start. those processes too. Yeah. Like it's something where once we put you, your most of your products are in, we do go ahead and put you on the production calendar. And an email goes out saying, this is your estimated time. And then mm-hmm. I have lots of little things like, remember, this is estimated. This is not set in stone. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because we're trying to make sure that we set expectations correctly. Yeah. Um, and that's still a, a work in progress. We're still kind of honing that yeah. to make sure. Because we want to make sure we take care of our clients, but also set expectations that they don't expect us to be there earlier than we mm-hmm. actually can be. Yeah, and with custom products, it's, you know, it's most of it's out of our control. Yep. Like we can right. place the order, and we just wait. <laughs> to mm-hmm. get, so you know, yeah, product delay, like material delays, Let's delivery delays. That. Um, you know, truck drivers, all yeah. of that comes into plays outside of our control. So yep. we try to just you know account for some of that but right which is why we're opening up our own manufacturing center <laughs> so we yeah, can, and logistics uh, we um, just x that whole process <laughs> okay okay it's justin's new venture that we're not gonna be part of but <laughs> whatever <not>? <laughs> <laughs> i just need a little bit of money um okay. number four who will be working in my home what's the motivation behind that question is it going to be you mr contractor that i'm hiring no okay who is it going to be it won't be me because I've graduated from that level of expertise. You see, <laughs> yeah. um, it will be Justin, Stephen, or Drew. <laughs> well, that's not that's not a real good. I mean, I think graduated so, a little bit of an interesting like, word. If we're asking for you're more suited the benefit of the client. Um, the reason that question is good is because are we going to be uh, subcontracting everything? Right. Like, is it going to be your own crew that's doing this? That's right. Uh, if you are subcontracting, who are they? Yes. Do they have their own business? 
Are they right. licensed? Yeah. Uh, do they have insurance? Like, right. Yeah. Are, if I, are they felons? If are I was hiring drug someone? dealers, <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, you know, it is what it is. It's a good question to ask. If they were, it's not what it is. We <laughs> ask. We know. <laughs> if um, someone was, we ask them verify. <laughs> <laughs> Trust but verify, and they. If someone were to hire someone knowing that they're going to use subs, do you think someone would want the boss, the GC, to be there with them? I wonder if that happens a lot. No, I will be using subs. Okay. And that's like the end of the conversation. But they're not there on the job with their subs. How, how good of a relationship do you have with your subs, right? The short of the long for our company is, no, we don't that's use subs. Phrase. Short and the long? The short of the long. The short of the long. <laughs> like... This must be an Arkansas thing. <laughs> Particularly. The short and long answer is. The short of the long as we could expand this continuously. We have W2 employees. There's three currently. There's actually oh, a there's lot more than, more than that. that. Well, installers. I'm sorry. You guys know what I mean. Work with me here. Nope. <laughs> okay. They're we not working with We may be a small me. company, but we're not that small. Thank you very much. We have three installers. So three install crews, yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's it. That's all I'm going to say because I'm afraid to say anything else. <laughs> Smart man. Well, I mean, it would not be accurate to say we don't ever sub out things because there Correct. are some things that we aren't either licensed to do or um, just don't have the equipment to do it. Mm-hmm. Or is so it like just fabricating good. countertops. Like yeah. we're not going to go invest $500,000 in a fabrication shop just to cut some countertops right so um part of the gc's job is to oversee that and it is their responsibility to make sure whoever's in your home is doing the right work that Mm -hmm. they're good people uh and ultimately the responsibility falls on them if something goes up missing if something goes up damaged um yep so it is a a good question to ask Mm -hmm. how do you plan on uh producing this project for me is it going to be Like, how many crews are we talking about? Right. How many subs are going to be here? Um, What time do they start? How will I know if they're coming or not? So all of those questions are really good. Well, And we coordinate all of that. But like I said earlier, scheduling can be a nightmare sometimes. But it is, I mean, it's just part of the job. It's part of the reason they pay us to take care of it. So we coordinate Mm -hmm. the different things. We don't perform work that we're not licensed to perform. So if in the course of, we we rarely take on jobs where we know we're going to have to do that. But in the course of a job, if we find out something needs to be fixed, something we couldn't see behind a wall, needs to have a licensed plumber or something like that come in, then we have someone with the proper licensing come in. We're not just going to like I figure it out and, and go on. So, right. Um, there there are times and seasons that it is necessary yep. and proper to use an outside crew. Proper. Proper. Yeah. It's proper. Very proper. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So number five, kind of in the same vein of things, are you bonded, licensed, and insured, Eric? Are you James bonded? Mm. 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 Uh, yes. Yes, we are. He doesn't drive the car, though. What car does he drive? Aston Martin. Oh, nice. Very cool. I haven't seen it in the movies. He drives other ones. You haven't seen any James Bond movies? Mm-hmm. What? Is this a... No I'm, no. no, I'm shooting you straight. And barely any of the Mission Impossibles either. What? Am I missing out? You're missing a whole, like... There's a whole... I, I don't like, like a whole lot like. of movies, but... And I don't really like... I like those movies. I'll watch those. Over I like and over John again. Wick. That's good. Yeah. Hmm. I don't remember. Baba Yaga. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Anyhow. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> we are licensed and insured. Okay. Uh, and the importance but of not, this. But not, you're, you are bonded, but you are not bond. Not, yourself. not bond. 007. Yeah, you're not 007. I'm not a fan of martinis with olives. Oh. Ew. I tried to get him to take, to take like something olives. with olives this week, and he was like, eh, gag. Mm. Olives are gross. <clears throat> but yeah, it's um, a good question. They want to make sure that they're protected, mm-hmm. obviously. Yep. Can they see our licenses and insurance forms and all that stuff? Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah it's attached mm-hmm. to you know, when you <clears throat> go through the project and you get an estimate, it's attached. A uh, copy of our insurance is. Uh, mm-hmm. We do show a copy of our license during the meeting, the initial meeting. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, I would be concerned if someone isn't showing you that. 
um, right. or mentioning it. Right. That should be one of the first things they talk yeah. about. Yeah, 100%. Okay, what permits does my project need and will you get them? Well, it depends. If it is a full bathroom remodel, sometimes yep. it requires them. <clears throat> or maybe more often, you, you probably have more experience in that question than I do. So. Mm -hmm. It depends. Like, it depends I, on your jurisdiction. Yeah. It depends on the jurisdiction. <laughs> if you and live I, in town. <laughs> if you live in the city limits. If you don't live in the city limits. If you're moving plumbing versus just replacing a faucet. Right. I mean, those right. type of things. It gets really funny. I have called lots of jurisdictions and talked with lots of inspectors and lots of people in the office saying, you know, just just call the inspector. And so then you have to go and track down an inspector. And mm -hmm. They've all been very helpful, but it, it does get kind of comical because literally these guys are 10 miles apart and have totally different rules. Yeah. And yep. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> the way that works is it is uh, it's called the authority having jurisdiction. So each city, municipality, whatever, if they set up a building permit or um, structure, Mm -hmm. then whoever that inspector is is the authority that has jurisdiction of that area they interpret the code however they think Th it's there written. is a standard okay. code but yeah they, that I mean, kind they of applies differently all use the same code but some people interpret it differently mm. it's um, always good <laughs> <laughs> but if if permits are required then expect some delays i mean this mm -hmm. is uh because you have to get a certain amount of work done i mean you're working schedule, with the city so schedule the uh, city or county <laughs> expect mm -hmm. some delays <laughs> and uh you know you're gonna have to wait a day or two for them to show up and you know if they find anything then that has to be repaired they have to come back and look at it right um but yeah it's it's a necessary um part of the process many times yeah. and it's a protection for you <clears throat> oh, too, yeah. to make sure mm -hmm. that things are done well especially 100%. if it's inside a wall that's going to be covered up they want to look at it first to make sure that yeah. you did what you said you're going to do and <clears throat> termite way. treat it and everything like that right. so mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> awesome. excuse me um so yeah if if the person you're hiring says i need you to get the permit which most um jurisdictions allow homeowners to get a permit right <clears throat> um that, I would question what's going on there. Well, what does that usually mean? Yeah, I didn't know people. Expand on that a little bit. Eric. Well, it means. Tell if, me a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> um, if your contractor or uh, quote contractor is not able to get a permit, that means they're not licensed. Ah. Mm -hmm. uh. So yeah. that's an issue. And you can't have insurance if you're not licensed. So mm. like one not licensed another, or insured. <laughs> right. So if someone says the homeowner to the homeowner they need to get the permit, that that tells you a lot of things in mm -hmm. that one statement. Yeah, that pretty much means they're not licensed. Mm -hmm. uh, that's and, awesome. And you'll have some contractors or self proclaimed contractors say they are licensed. Uh, and I've run into many situations where that's just the business license. Right. Like they paid $25 to the mm -hmm. city so that they could operate a business but not be a contractor. Right. And that does, that's not There's the same difference. type of license. license. contractor, yeah. Right. There's license. a license to have a business because, yeah. like, we have to have a license to have a business in the city of Springdale. Springdale. Yeah, yeah. Any business has to have a license. To right. Operate. Yeah. And to have a, a you know, business, you have to have an address. You have right. to have all this stuff. But well, in what scope you're operating depends on what – licensure you're going to need so for remodeling contractors license right. yeah. And, yeah and that's been kind of goes back to the permit things too like some of the places i've called well yes we'll we will need to come and inspect it but for you to do that you also have to have a business license here mm. we're like we don't we aren't located they're like but you still have to have a business license because then it throws you under mm. our um jurisdiction i see and so i'm like okay so not uh -huh. only would i have to go through the process of getting <laughs> a business license in that like small municipality i'd also have to get them to get the permit yeah and they they've usually they're like it's like a you know a 10 or 15 minute process mm -hmm. which tells you how easy it is to get a business license yeah, yeah. oh sure yeah sure mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay so okay. next question how do you work what time does your work day start oh i love this question well i usually start off by doing this right here mm. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> then I do my morning stretches, a little bit of yoga. Then I call Eric, see what he's up to. <laughs> yeah. Then I kind of just mosey around with a cup of coffee and mm. think about what I really need to do for the day. And then, then about noon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just Don't we wish? Don't we wish? Life of leisure. <laughs> not. Not. <laughs> 
Now, your day starts really early. Yeah, it does. Um, but then you usually get here ahead of the crew to make sure that everyone knows. I don't beat go. the crew. Well, they almost is, always beat me. Hey, that's so, good. That is true. You've trained um, them well, babe. <laughs> no, they've they've always been very much like usually thirty minutes early. 15 oh, minutes early. Yeah. Yes. Yep. <clears throat> I'm not here that That's usually early. when we would usually get here around 645-ish every morning. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, they won't let me drop <clears throat> off the kids at school that early, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, well, it makes the, sense the, why the you're here at 8. The school frowns on it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's happened before. <laughs> yeah. I've heard stories. <laughs> Wait. I have a, I have a child to pick up. There was a four-year-old sitting on the bench when we got here this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That could be a problem. Yeah. He's all right. But, yeah, I mean, if you're having remodel work done, that means it's in your home. And uh, so your work-life schedule continues on, even though you're taking on a remodel project. So you got to know, like, how, how are you planning on working? Where are you going to park? Like, what do we need to do, like, logistically for pets or kids or um, anything like that? Um, how are we going to get in? What happens yeah. when we leave? How does, yeah, how do you yeah. get in if we mm-hmm. have to go to, you know, a way to work or something so a lot of those logistical things are a very good thing to talk about mm-hmm. early on so that mm-hmm. you know if there are special needs for like pets or whatever mm-hmm. then those arrangements are made ahead of time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then we do have some sort of we do try to work as, e- as best we can with the schedule that you have to keep like we like to start around 7 30 or 8 yeah that's not always feasible <clears throat> Um, yeah. depending on, you know, where you are and what you have to going on. But that is generally when we start. And our guys tend to work ten, four 10-hour days. Correct, yep. Um, mm-hmm. They do that. They can get more done. They can get in and out of your home faster. Mm-hmm. Um, but that that means they get there earlier. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, it also means they get the Friday option, too, if they need to right. stay we, to finish and, it up. And we do. That is part of what our process. We keep that Friday where they usually don't work Friday, but if we have a job that's running late, um, or could be finished, or within could like be a finished three hours yeah, or something, right? Yeah. We can we can send somebody over there. It costs us a little bit more to pay someone overtime, but it keeps the client much more happy because mm-hmm. they're done before the weekend, and yeah, <laughs> or we get to yeah. a good stopping point where you're not left with you know short a bathroom or without a sink or right, something right. like that. And one thing to to think about as a client or homeowner is you're having someone come in and do work on your home during their business hours. Like, so you can't expect them to say, we'll just come in at noon because I have these things going on and I need you to leave by five. No, they're there to work a 10 hour day. And so as a homeowner, you need to like allow for that or it's just going to take forever or someone may not even work for you. If you tell them that's when you have to pull off a job. And that just means, well, we can't promise when we're going to be back because now I can only spend half a day here. So I have to find another job that's only half a day or find work that can only be done in half a day segments. And that... That's, that's just a not, nightmare. That's not that's how it works. And, I mean, there are times when we've had to do that, and I know the clients get frustrated, but believe as business, me, like, as a business, it is a remodeling the, business. That, yeah. it's not just your job that got messed up by us having to pull off or someone right. not being able to be there. That meant it set off a whole domino of things. So my one call to you yep. means I have twelve more calls to Extra make. Extra time, gas, like, yeah. yeah. And so, um, I mean, I it's it's a big deal if we yeah. have to pull off of something and can't work because mm-hmm. of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yep. Um, yeah. So, it's so, good. so talk don't about do that, that ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> that is something we do try to talk about, but I think that probably those questions That's should be question. addressed up front. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Number eight. Okay. No matter what. What's your expected payment schedule? I mean, do you require a deposit for custom products? I mean, really? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because guess it, what happens when you don't pay for it, and we do. <laughs> <laughs> we can't return it. <laughs> right. Why is this an important question from the client's perspective? Oh. Well, I want to know how much skin you have in the game versus I have in the game. Mm-hmm. I guess that would be the motivation, right? Mm-hmm. Or maybe they're looking for it. red flags of like, you know, someone who's who's not asking all of it up front or something like that. Like if mm-hmm. someone asks, how, like, what is your deposit? And they say, oh, we need everything up front. And that's maybe that's what 100% they're doing. 100% up front yeah. is not yeah. smart. Yeah. Like I would, that would be a big red flag. That would be yeah. a big red banner with sirens and flashing <laughs> yeah. lights. Yeah. Um, Don't do it. But on the other hand, 
if it's a custom product and they're not getting enough, I would really question how f- feasible their business plan is. Mm-hmm. Like, are you still going to be around in two months when the product comes in? Because if you're not collecting enough to cover, like, custom materials, your business doesn't necessarily function very well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the way we view this is um, almost all of our products are custom or mm-hmm. custom ordered to yeah. um, for the each client and their mm-hmm. project. And, mm-hmm. you know, this is your project. This is your idea. Uh you got to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> and so a lot of times the deposit doesn't cover everything. It no. sure doesn't. No. Um, I, but it does say, okay, yeah, we're in this. We're going to do this. And uh, let's go ahead and get this ordered. Um, so that's primarily if someone is asking for a deposit, um, anything, I would say, 60% or less, that's pretty reasonable mm-hmm. and to be expected. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, now, there are occasions where 100% up front is okay, especially if it's like, I'm just buying this custom cabinet from you. Mm-hmm. Well, there's no install. You're coming to pick it up. Right. It's just like going to a big box store and ordering yep. something. Like, yep. you got to pay for it before right. we do that. Well, that's kind of, yeah, that's a different yeah. scope a of different. work. We've, yeah. And we've done that. We can do that for people. Yeah. You know, they, they want cabinets through us, but yeah. they want to take them to their yeah. remote cabin four hours away where we don't work. And, mm-hmm. yeah. Or, mm-hmm. you know. They want to do the install themselves. Absolutely. Something. Yeah, that's so something we can work out. It, it's just a good question to ask to protect yourself mm-hmm. and to not be shocked if a contractor is asking for 40 or 50 percent up front. Um, right. Yeah. And that's the reason you sign a contract. And we're going to, one of the next questions, we're going to kind of go into how you're protected. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. By, when you do that, there are ways to check to make sure you're protected. So right. that'll mm-hmm. be one of the, the next questions we ask. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, which one would you, you want to go to next? Number nine, how you, have you resolved – let me yep. start over. How have you resolved differences of opinions <laughs> in the past? <laughs> so, Good I question. mean, this is an unusual question. Mm-hmm. I still don't understand it. I can't mm-hmm. say that I've had too many people ask me, well, when something went wrong, how did you handle it? Right. Uh, that's a that's like a that's a chess level question right there uh, because <laughs> chess. most people don't talk about that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I'll if you run into a, yeah. if you run into a situation or a problem or an issue or uh, you uncover something in the wall uh, that no one knew was there, like termite or rot. Right. Mm-hmm. How do you handle this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I surrender. <laughs> That's it. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there are situations where you have to negotiate through things. Yeah. Like, right. We didn't know it was there. Mm-hmm. It's going to cost this much more to move forward. Is that something you want to do? Well, um, and I think that kind of ties into the next question. So that this this last question really, it encompasses the last couple. Right. Is, does the contract cover everything? We use a pretty everything is a very broad <laughs> right <laughs> term. So well, the contract Acts of God, <laughs> yeah, well, that's we, actually written in there. Yeah. It actually is, it is written yeah. in there. I mean, your insurance has that written in there. If you don't know, you should check. Um, or acts of nature, they acts, say. Well, some of that is. It's not nature. Um, it's God. <laughs> well, you know, but there are there are times when we say we know it's going to be this much to do that, and you open up the wall and you realize their washing machine on the other side of the wall has been leaking for five years. Well, now, mm-hmm. now we have a new problem. Yep. So our contract covers the work we're going to do, but it right. can't cover other Everything. damage that we have discovered. Yeah, right. Or you open up a wall and you realize there's, like you said earlier, termite damage. We're in Arkansas. There are bugs here, lots and lots of bugs. Mm. So termites are a real problem. Yeah. Um, yep. Yep. Um, I'm well just I'm thinking through some of the projects we've run into. Yep. Um, one that comes to mind immediately is we replaced a shower, and the plumbing was galvanized. The water lines were galvanized, mm. uh, which huge problem. So galvanizes metal, metal rusts. It closes it's old, up the water lines. Um, it closes up the water lines. It's really nasty to yeah. drink. It'll and then, make, that's what turns your water yellow and orange. Yeah, mm. and if you like disturb it anyway it loosens it up and then it clogs your faucets and Mm -hmm. it's a mess but on that same job they had cast iron drain line that had eroded like it was open on the whole bottom side of the pipe Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so of course that was an expense the homeowner was uh, expecting they weren't expecting no they were not expecting yeah Yeah. sorry Mm -hmm. um but you know 
sure we could just reconnect the shower to that and mm-hmm. let it go but you know we can't do that yeah so yeah. we had to yeah. let them know look you got a serious <laughs> you issue. You have a serious your, issue here. Your water is just draining under your crawl space. And so um, it's those type of situations that, you know, a lot of homeowners don't crawl up under their house. Some yeah. of them you can if it's on a slab. Right. So um, we try to be very upfront with anything we run into. I mean, we could cover things up and just go about our day, but that's not how we operate. Correct. Right. Um, we're, not, so we're not going to be happy doing that. If a contract, I mean, the contract is not going to cover everything like that. Um, mm-hmm. Ours has a clause for things that yep. are uncovered we're not aware of. Mm-hmm. And in those situations, we just stop working, figure out what you want to do about it, and then we continue on. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And usually, you know, it's not crazy big issues, but when mm-hmm. stuff does like that happen that's outside the scope right. of our work, we recommend people to come in and fix it. Right. And so yeah. that kind of kind of goes back and covers how have you resolved differences in the past. Yeah. Like our contract covers certain things um, and then certain things it says specifically yep. we can't cover because we we can't know that, you know, if we're just – replacing a toilet and in the course of replacing the toilet find out that you have eroded drain pipes uh-huh. i mean we're not going to just not tell you mm-hmm, um, right. but that doesn't mean we're going to just pay for it out of pocket too that could yeah. be a whole that's a whole nother issue yeah yeah every contract uh at minimum should have some sort of resolution like if there is a problem mm-hmm. like how do we resolve this and move forward right um, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's a protection for both parties that sign a contract and uh you know our terms uh, continue to get more detailed right as we learn oh this is an issue we need to address this we need to clarify this for both our safety and the clients Mm -hmm. and um so yeah i think that is is very important it's a lot of legal stuff that people get not very excited about yeah right but when the time comes and it you need it Mm -hmm. um it's always good to have there yeah and that kind of also going back two questions to what is our payment schedule that is part of our contract too yes and that protects both sides of the transaction Mm -hmm. you know that this is what happens when you put down this amount of money and when you get to the next step and you put down this amount of money this is what has happened or what is just going to happen so that way you have it's a give and take because us coming and installing something that's a custom product we can't take it back out and we can't reuse it yep. um, we're not using you know installation methods where you can just like oh sorry i'm just gonna take that you know couch back or that piece right. of art back it's it's adhered well <laughs> yeah um, yes <laughs> so with stuff that you can't get from you know big box like standard size stuff right that's that's the big difference that i think a lot of people mm-hmm. get hung up on mm-hmm. and they might not know when they're bringing us in and i try to make that um trying to make that point to them that, that that's not what we use mm-hmm. and so like when we order this stuff either it's in your project or it's at our warehouse yeah and, and so you know and we can't do much with it if yeah we, if we can't put it in your home so yep. that's kind of that's a tricky thing but that's where the contract covers right it, it, there's it's a level of protection for you there as well because if we don't hold up our end of the bargain you have a signed document saying this is what you said you were going to do mm-hmm. oh yeah yeah absolutely so, so. There you and go. so um a bathroom remodel. We try to make it not as complicated as we just made it sound. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's some things to think about. And um, you you as a homeowner should have every feeling of comfort mm-hmm. to ask questions like this. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, and hopefully this gives you some ideas mm-hmm. um, to ask your Yeah, we would rather you ask the question than, mm-hmm. than not feel comfortable and if we don't have an answer for it, we can find it. Yeah. Yep. You know. There's no question off limits for us. That's right. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. right. So. All right. Okay. That's all I got. All right. Well, let's wrap things up. Thanks, everyone, for watching another episode of New House, Same Address. We'll talk to you in the next one. We'll see you. Bye. Later.